Hi friends, it's Sage from the Saskatoon Public Library. I'm in my home on Treaty 6 territory, traditional homeland of the Métis. And today is Sunday Crafternoon. We are going to sit down and get a little creative together. I'm gonna to walk you through a really easy project using a few things that you can find around the house. And the point of this afternoon is not to turn out the perfect product. In fact, if it's not perfect, it's even better because <laughs> those homemade gifts, those homemade crafts are often more meaningful than a store-bought product. So today, I'm sure you're dying to know what we're going to be making. You are going to need a whole bunch of toilet paper rolls and a glue gun and some cardboard and we're going to make a cardboard wreath. So I started to make it just to see how things work and I would suggest that you don't use um, quite as big a circle because it uses up quite a bit of toilet paper rolls. So what I have discovered is that each little flower you need six pieces and what I have found to be able to cut from a toilet paper roll is five. So you'll need quite a few toilet paper rolls. Hopefully you saw our last video with Lindsay and she suggested that you start saving them. And we're doing this video in November so that you've got lots of time before Christmas to start collecting toilet paper rolls. So what I would suggest you start with is a piece of cardboard because we want to have something to be able to tape or rather glue our uh, flowered points on. So I saved this big piece of cardboard from a box. Um, if you can't find a box around your house, perhaps you've got a box from a frozen pizza or pizza delivery. Um, it doesn't have to be super big, really. If you find two pieces that are smaller, you can tape them together. No one's going to see the back of the circle. That's the back from here. Um, so it really doesn't matter if it's piecemeal together. Um, so find what you can see what you can find around your house. So I grab a bowl and I'm going to place it down on the cardboard to trace a circle because I sure can't trace a perfect circle. So I'm going to use the bowl and I'm going to draw around and I will turn it so that you can see. I'm not sure you can see the circle or not. Nope, you can't. Not really. So you can pretend that it's there because I can see it even if you can't. So it's probably about 12 inches wide and you have a choice once you draw your circle. So this is your circle that you're drawing. You can choose to add on width on the outside of the circle to make the wreath or you can choose to add into the inside of the circle and cut out a smaller circle inside. So for instance, I used a really big basin. I had a bowl and I cut um, actually, I, I traced the inside part and then I added about two inches all the way around. And in retrospect, I think it would have been better with a circle this big to go inside instead of outside. So it also depends on how big a bowl you have around the house and it also depends on how many toilet paper rolls you have. If you only have, say, 10 toilet paper rolls, I would go with a smaller circle. Of course, the bigger you go, the more toilet paper rolls you're going to need. So kind of have to go from there. So I've got my circle. Um, if you are the kind of person who likes to be really specific and a, a bit of a perfectionist with crafts, you could take a ruler and measure uh, two inches on either side of that circle, depending on how you're gonna cut it. Um, and you could put little marks all the way around, two inches, and then hand draw a circle. Or when you're cutting, you can just cut around the circle, which is probably what I'm gonna do. So you can use scissors or an X-Acto knife. Either way, be careful with your hands. Always watch what you're doing. It doesn't hurt to watch the video first so you have an idea of what you need to do instead of working along, but it's up to you. Um, so I might pause it for a little bit while I try and cut the circle. We'll cut a little bit and we'll see how far we get. Um, so I'm gonna maybe cut this cardboard in half. And this is really thick cardboard. And I probably, well, but you know, my scissors are actually working. It's a miracle. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a smaller piece. Uh, turn it around and meet the ends. Oh my goodness. 
gotta use my muscular fingers for this. So I have a smaller piece that's, piece that's a little more manageable to cut and I am going to eyeball the circle on the inside. So I'm just gonna quickly draw a circle with my pencil. Okay, and so I have traced Yes, better you can see if I bring it a little bit closer. You can see my circle. On the outside was the trace of uh, the side of the bowl. On the inside is what I hand drew. And now I am going to use my Zacto knife because I know that my scissors are not gonna make it. Maybe it's actually my fingers that are not gonna make it. <laughs> so I'm going to actually put this on the side, the edge of my table so that I have a little bit of leverage. I'll use my arm on the cardboard and I'm just going to cut a little bit at a time and then I'm going to rotate there we go and as I go I just realized <laughs> that this is what <laughs> I'm not a professional crafter um, I started cutting on the outside of the circle but I think actually in retrospect I should cut on the inside because it's going to be easier to cut the outside after I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna start again, and I'm gonna cut on the inside. Let's fix this exact knife a little bit. And turn around. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle because we're gonna be covering up the circle with our toilet paper uh, roll. So don't worry if it's not perfect. first. Okay. So I'm cutting. I might fast forward this part a bit. Ta-da! <laughs> it's done. Okay, this is the side I want. All right, so you've got your wreath. And I think this size of wreath, it's much more manageable than this size. This is going to take me forever <laughs> to finish. So I am going to set that aside and I'm going to start on this one. So like I think it's about 12 inches as I mentioned. Okay, so you want to get your glue gun plugged in. You want to make sure that you've got a surface that you can work on without getting the glue on the table. And you're going to pick up your toilet paper roll and you can measure and cut it perfectly, but I just eyeball. And what I found is that I can fit five well into a toilet paper roll. And you know, if you wanted to go with six, that would be good too, because actually you need six points for each flower. So, you know, this is where you kind of experiment as you go with the, the thickness of what you want your flower to be. I'll hold this one up a little bit closer for you to see. So there are six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. And yeah, maybe make them a bit smaller. If you make them smaller, then you're gonna need more of them. So keep that in mind too. Okay, so what I learned from this one, my little experiment first, is that it's better just to start with one and put a dollop of glue on one part of your circle. And I'm gonna pull up a wee bit closer. Can you see where my forefinger is? So it's not quite in the middle. And I just stick it on. And then I put my finger on the inside of that tube and press down. It's a little bit warm, but it's not too bad. And remember, if you get hot glue on your finger, just rub it off right away. If you pull it off quickly, it doesn't tend to hurt as much. So I've got one on, okay? Now, when I first tried this, I was like, how am I gonna do this? And I started to lay them like, one, like my first flower was one little piece and then I put the other one right across from it. It doesn't work well that way. 
It works better if you start with one and then you work counter or you work clockwise rather all the way around. So you're just putting the one beside the other. And don't worry about making a hole in the middle or leaving a hole in the middle because what we do is we use a piece of paper or another you know, smaller bit of toilet paper and we're gonna color them red um, and we're gonna fill that in with a little bit of paper so that you can't actually see the gap on the page. So I'm gonna put this one here and then I'll bring this a little bit closer to the camera. Now, you wanna overlap those toilet paper bits just a wee bit. There, can you see? Yep, because you wanna get six on to that within a circle, right? So there's two. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. We are working with toilet paper rolls, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> this is not a million dollar craft. This is recycled goods. And uh, toilet paper, you know, has gone through its own little history here through the pandemic. It's been a hot commodity back in the spring. So uh, it's good to make use of all the parts of something, right? Recycle, reuse. Okay, I cut, I cut five and I need six. So I'm gonna cut one more little one. And I'm gonna stick in the middle. So while I'm yapping at you, I'm not showing what I'm doing. So there's five. And now I'm gonna stick that other one in and I'm overlap a little bit. You know, I can't remember what show it was, but um, the catchphrase used to be just make it work. So there we go. It actually looks pretty good on camera. When I look at it, I see its flaws, but when I hold it up, it actually isn't too bad. So that's a good lesson, hey? And when you know it, these two are actually do look like they're crossed from another. That wasn't on purpose. I started with one and I just worked my way around and I stuck the glue blobs on the cardboard just close to the edge of the one that was already down before it, okay? So a little bit closer to you, the camera, so you can see there's a hole in there. So now we're gonna fill that little gap in with a band of toilet paper. So you have a choice. Um, you can use, uh, you've got lots of toilet papers cut, cut a little piece off. I don't know if you can see that, there we go. A little one, or what I used, um, started to use on my big wreath is just scrap paper. And so I've cut a band of scrap paper. I'm gonna make this one just a little bit more narrow. And then what I found is a red marker. Maybe you've got red construction paper. That would work too. The red marker. I just colored red. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to color the whole paper because you're not wrapping the whole paper. Does that make sense? You're just making a small band. There, hope you can see that. So you're gonna cut a little bit and a little bit of eyeballing um, and playing with the, the, the space that you've got in there already. And if you want, you can use, wrap around your finger for, to get a little bit of a circle, or you can use, I'll use the marker again. You can kind of reinforce the edges so that it's kind of circular because you are gonna glue it. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. But here's my band, okay? And then I'm not gonna glue the whole thing, I'm just gonna glue the end of the paper. You can see the white that I'm holding up. And this is just regular, like, writing paper. So it's obviously not as thick as the toilet paper. So be very careful because it does get, it is quite hot with the hot glue. So I've made a band like this. Closer to you see. There you go. And then where, on the back where that, the paint, the papers, the two ends overlapped. That's the part that I'm gonna glue. Put a dollop of hot glue on, okay. Now, I'm gonna bring this bit closer. I'm gonna slip that in and push it down. It doesn't have to be all the way down in touching the cardboard backdrop, but you wanna get it just sort of pushed down enough on the, on the flowers. So it's a little lopsided, this one. But the next one, the first one is always, I find not as good as the second one and the third one. They get better and bigger, right? Does that make sense? The first one, yeah, the first one is not as good as the second one. You learn as you go. You get a little bit of a rhythm going. So what I did with this one is I used darker toilet paper roll and then the white roll. 
Obviously, we don't get the same brand in my house. It really comes down to whatever is the cheapest. So, you know, I kind of thought that the colors looked nice with the variety, but you know, you might have all brown or all white. So you just fill the whole thing up. Now they don't have to be super close to one another. You can spread them out a bit. And then when I hold this one up a bit closer to you, you can see that I started filling in with leaves. So, and yes, I did leave a little bit of that paper on because I thought that it looked kind of cool, right? Some brands, it's really easy to get the remnants of the toilet paper off and others aren't. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to leave that remnant on the leaf so that you get a bit of texture on the page, on the on your wreath, I should say, on the page on the paper. So I think when I fill all of this wreath in, I would go back and then, like once I've got all the flowers on, then I'd go back and add the leaves in so that you can fill in a bit on the inside and the outside. If you're the kind of person who has paint around the house, maybe you've got some craft paint, you could certainly paint these. You might wanna paint them before you cut them. You could spray paint them green, you could spray paint them red. I've seen wreaths for sale that are rainbow colors, really the sky's the limit. And you know, the, the idea with this wreath is more on the, on the side of shabby chic. <laughs> you know, you don't have to pay a lot of money for a fancy wreath to hang on your door. Um, you can just make one out of toilet paper and uh, it can be just as welcoming and just as lovely. So have fun and enjoy your shabby chic toilet paper wreath on your front door and uh, maybe share them with us if you'd like. We'd love to see what you do. Do join us in a month. On the last Sunday of the month, we do Crafter News. So the next one will be the end of December after Christmas. We look forward to seeing you then and uh, take care. <laughs>